Welcome this evening to the April 10th regular meetings of the School Board of St. Lucie County. We welcome each and every one of you that have come today and um, it's always a, a privilege and a blessing to see the room full uh, and the support that our students are having from their parents. We will do the Pledge of Allegiance and then directly after that we always recite our Kids at Hope Hunters Pledge and uh, so we have a wonderful special performance here from uh, Parkway Elementary students. They are di going to be directed by their music teacher, Miss Beth Torrison. And they are going to have, we're going to have a selection by one student regarding the Star Spangled Banner and a variety, a variation of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on their violins. And then we'll have the mini chorus of Parkway sing uh, I Promise, which is one of the songs from their spring programs. So if you would with me, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, we're going to ask the board members if we will go down to enjoy the presentation. Oh, Treasure Hunters Pledge first. I am an adult and a treasure hunter. I am committed to search for all the talent, skills, and intelligence that exist in all children and youth. I believe all children are capable of success, no exceptions. Would you please come down, board?
That was great, and we definitely welcome any of the parents who would like to stay with your students and give them the opportunity to see how a school board meeting is ran and our board meeting is ran. We welcome you. Okay, we're moving right along. We will have our special order of businesses. We're going to ask Super Superintendent Gent if he would take over this portion of the meeting. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I want to thank again the uh, students and parents came out. That's little Audrey that sang the national anthem, and her parents are here. I'm not sure if she has already left or not. She's in the back, so fantastic job. That's so tough to do as an adult, and for a youngster to do that, fantastic. <laughs> At this time, I'll ask the board members to join me down front, and Carrie Patrick will introduce our friends from the Sun Sunrise Kiwanis organization. Good evening, Madam Chair, board members, and Superintendent Gent. It is indeed my pleasure this evening to introduce to you two members of the Fort Pierce Sunrise Kiwanis. We have Ms. Quinn Hazley Wheeler and Mr. Roger Priest of this organization who are going to come forward this evening to present some awards to our schools for their efforts in this year's uh, St. Lucie County Fair for the school displays. Uh, would you please come forward? And they are coming forward with some big checks that our schools are very happy to receive. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our pleasure to be here with you this evening. We do have some checks to present to some of the local schools for um, their, their efforts in the school display out at the fairgrounds this year. Uh, my name is Quinn Hazley Wheeler, and uh, with me I have Roger Priest from our club, along with Deb Ma hiding in the back here, and some of the retired educators. We also have Ms. Sheila from Garber Buick and Pastor Craig Kramer with us. Um, the Education Foundation this year is receiving a donation of 100000 uh, 100, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, $1,000. This is an annual donation, and it's funded by our golf tournament that we have every year in June at the Legacy in PGA. Main Street Sights and Sounds Parade is another $1,000, and this is for the transportation of the bands. Everybody loves the marching bands in the parade, and it's, it's such a great thing to have them in the parade because the kids love it. So this year, Fort Pierce Central, Westwood, and Centennial participated. Um, we also, about three years ago, started supporting the FFA um, in their efforts with their livestock. So we give them a scholarship that helps pay for the food for their swine um, and different things that they may need while they're raising um, their pig for the fair. Probably my favorite thing we do every year is going into um, both Fairlawn Elementary and Francis K. Sweet, and we get to read Dr. Seuss books to the kids for Dr. Seuss's birthday. Um, this is something our club looks forward to every year, and it's a great time for us to go and kind of be a kid and get tongue twisted reading the Dr. Seuss books. For Read Across America, we will be donating $250 to each of those schools for their media center. And now for the St. Lucie County Fair. Um, it's a total of $7,000 that we um, donate. And um, you can see on the slide there, we have a wonderful judging panel. Uh, Miss Gertrude Walker, um, Supervisor of Elections, always helps us each year with the actual voting machines. So kids really get a kick out of that when they come into our education building and they actually get to use the real voting machines. And Miss Jeannie Keaton um, is a wonderful supporter of our club and she is with the St. Lucie County Fair Association. And um, we really could not maintain that building on our own, so we uh, give special thanks to the Retired Educators Association here in St. Lucie County for helping us volunteer and man that building um, during the fair. And um, you can see there at the bottom, the sponsors are Garber Buick GMC here in Fort Pierce, Westside Church, Dermody um, Pediatric Dental, and of course the St. Lucie County Fair Association. So the first por uh, place award winners is $1,000, and that's sponsored by Garber Buick. The first place is River's Edge Elementary. So if they are here to receive their check. <laughs> what? Uh, Westgate K through eight. Also, if they could come forward. And Port St. Lucie High School.
good to see you. It's me. You're welcome. Right. Thank you very much and congratulations. <laughs> the second place award winners um, was sponsored by Dermody Pediatric Dental. Um, Second place goes to Fairlawn Elementary, Palm Point Research, and Lincoln Park Academy. Congratulations. <laughs> Third place um, award winners. This was sponsored by Westside Church, and we have um, Pastor Craig Kramer with us today that's going to be helping us present the checks. The first third place um, award goes to Parkway Elementary. The next is Sun Grove Montessori. And the final is Fort Pierce Westwood High School. Thank you all and congratulations. Finally, we have the Out of uh, the Box Award and this is sponsored by the Fair Association. Um, and this year it's uh, Windmill Point Elementary. Dan McCarty Middle School. And Treasure Coast High School. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
All right, and um, the last award is the People's Choice Award. So you can see here, um, 813 votes out of the total 6,307 um, ballots cast. This is sponsored by the St. Lucie uh, County Elections Office, and I would like to invite them forward, um, those of them that are here. I saw some familiar faces. Okay. We have Miss Gertrude herself. Um, so this year it goes to Fairlawn Elementary School. So again, special thanks to the St. Lucie County School Board, um, Superintendent Gent, thank you for, for allowing us to be here this evening, the retired educators of St. Lucie County, and all of the St. Lucie County schools that participated this year in the fair. Um, out of the, the amount of people that go through our building during the fair, um, they really get a kick out of the exhibits, and the kids put in a lot of work, as well as the teachers, so we really appreciate all of your efforts. Uh, for our partnership to serve the world, uh, to serve the children of the world, through the service leadership programs. Total 2018 donations was $10,100. So thank you. And next on the agenda, we have something that is very exciting, the first vote week proclamation. As citizens of a democratic society, one of our very um, positive rights and responsibilities is to vote. And we have Mrs. Gertrude Walker, Supervisor of Elections, here to share with us a very exciting opportunity uh, through our partnership with Ms. Walker and her team. Thank you and good afternoon. I'm delighted to be here to read this proclamation. A proclamation declaring the week of April 9th through April 13th as first vote week in St. Lucie County High Schools. Whereas high school is one way that young people become prepared for adulthood. And a major goal of, a, of high school is to teach the skills, behavior, and attitudes that are needed to become a contributing citizen to our society. And whereas FERT's vote is a nonpartisan, classroom-based voter education, registration, and citizenship program conducted in American government, world history, and civics classes for high school students. And whereas St. Lucie County High Schools, with its standardized education program and outstanding teachers, will help to educate students about the importance of and the duties of citizenship and encourage them to be involved in their community. Whereas the First Folk Program is committed to ensuring the vitality of American democracy and seeks to inspire young Americans to be informed and involved participants in the voting process. 
And whereas the goal of the supervisor of elections is to give every student the opportunity to register to vote at age 18 or pre-register at age 16 and 17, whereas the supervisor of elections and her staff will be on high school campuses to assist students and teachers with voter registration in support of the First Vote program. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the school board of St. Lucie County, Florida endorses the week of April 9th through the 13th, 2018 as First Vote Week in St. Lucie County High Schools. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the school board, uh, Superintendent Wayne Gent, Dr. Helen Wild, all of the principals and all of the wonderful teachers for their unwavering support of the First Vote program since its inception in St. Lucie County in, two, in 19, uh, excuse me, I'm getting confused, 1992, it's been so long ago. Uh, we have had the privilege of registering thousands of students here in the classrooms in high school. And it would not be possible without the support of the school board, St. Lucie County School Board, and of course the hardworking volunteers and staff that will be in every high school for the next two days. And we will, attend, we will be registering students uh, and making sure that those individuals uh, have that great opportunity to cast their first vote. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Superintendent Wayne Gent, may we have a recommendation? So moved by Ms. Hensley, second, second by Ms. Hilson. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. We now move to the STAR Awards, and this is the part of the presentation in which we recognize our um, members of our staff for some of the outstanding accomplishments that they have achieved uh, from their colleagues, from the public, because they have provided outstanding service. First, what I would like to do is recognize Ms. Patricia Chesser. Ongoing professional development is a quality that aids in professionals in performing their duties and responsibilities at the highest levels, earning them the respect of their peers and supporting quality service to their customers. This evening, it is my honor to recognize Patricia Chesser, who recently passed her Society for Human Resources Management. She is a senior certified professional, uh, she has received her senior certified professional certification. Tricia is the administrative assistant in human resources, and her role is critical to the success of HR operations. Obtaining an HR certification is not an easy task. The certification process includes over eight weeks of classes and a four-hour test. This highly sought-after distinction has only a 57% pass rate, so congratulations to you. Her Tricia is completing her 29th year in St. Lucie Public School, and 16 of them, 16 of those years have been in human resources, and they are so very pleased to have you there. So thank you for the service that you have provided, and we look forward to your continued leadership. Congratulations. <laughs> and she has her fan club. <laughs> Next, continuing with professional development, um, I would like to invite Eric H uh, Hennick from the Custodial Services uh, Department. <laughs> Eric is the Area Manager in Custodial Services, and he has taken on the responsibility of becoming a certified trainer as per the Florida School Plant Managers Association. 
Having this distinction, Mr. Hennick is trained and he continues to train all of the plant managers in St. Lucie County, thus heightening their level of service to others and elevating their personal capacity for success. Congratulations to both of you for your ongoing professional development commitments. And next, it's the human touch that makes us so very special when it comes to recognizing the need that our students have, just to look beyond perhaps someone having a bad day and making sure that we are that person that wishes them a good morning and a happy hello. Mrs. Andrea Jacobs is a bus driver, a beloved bus driver. And why do I say that? Um, we have one of her students, a high school student, who sent her a note, and I'm going to read that note to you. This came to her at Christmas time, and she said this was the best Christmas present that she received. Hi, Miss Jacobs. I'd like to thank you for being the best driver I've had. You try your best to engage with many of us, and though we don't always greet you with a smiling face, we deep down do appreciate your intentions. Many of us have bad days. Well, don't we all? And sometimes a high can make our day slightly better. Unfortunately, a lot of kids on the bus are spoiled brats, but... <laughs> You found a way to deal with them all without retaliating uh, for their ignorance. I do hope that you have a Merry Christmas and a very, very Happy New Year. Sincerely, Carlos. And that came to her from one of her students. So no matter what we do, always offer that smile. You never know what it does to someone else. So you made someone's day, and it was important. We do appreciate our stars, and if you all would like to come together, we'll take a picture. At this time, I would like to call Mr. Bill Tomlinson because educators in need is a need indeed. And some of our student services staff gave of their time and energy to support uh, some of our friends to the south. Mr. Tomlinson. Thank you, Ms. Patrick. Mrs. Green and I come before you tonight, Madam Chair, members of the board, Superintendent Gent, to tell you that it is our pleasure to bring to your attention several individuals from our student services and guidance department who are being recognized for their humanitarian effort. After the incident at Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School in Broward on February the 14th, our staff graciously volunteered their time and efforts to assist the students as they began to transition back into the school. Our staff developed a schedule that would provide them with an opportunity to serve Broward Public Schools and still serve the students of St. Lucie Public Schools. We are so proud of their humanitarian efforts and we would like to bring them to you tonight for recognition before the board and our community. So I would like to call them up at this time our school psychologist David Kincaid, Shelley Welby, Anna Michelle Gillard, Kirsten Poinsini, Catherine Mantor, Jenny Paul, our social workers Bridget Locke, Martin Tejada, Melissa Desposito, Heather Cannon, Shamir Duralis, and our program specialist for school guidance, Stephanie Walters Cleveland, and April Mincy. And thank you for your wonderful efforts.
At this time, we will go right into our CTA report. Welcome this evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Madam Chair, board members, and Mr. Jen. Uh, you may have noticed that I'm not Vicki Rodriguez, or at least I hope you've noticed. I'm David Freeland, and I'm the new president of the St. Lucie CTA CU. For anyone who has not heard, Vicki Rodriguez will be representing educators at the state level working for the Florida Education Association. I'd like to begin my comments by expressing my thanks to Vicki on behalf of the St. Lucie education community. Vicki has spent many years advocating for our teachers and staff, and many of those she represents would not be where they are without Vicki. She has been a mentor and a model for what it means to be both an educator and a union representative. I would also like to thank Vicki personally she has been both friend and mentor and has guided me through many situations. She has left me with big shoes to fill, and I hope that I do the job that she believes I am capable of doing on behalf of our members. I'd also like to say that while I am not Vicki, she and I share some common beliefs. That doing the right thing by those I represent is going to make our schools better for our students. That everyone deserves to be treated as a professional and as if their contribution is critical to what we do in our schools and to the, to the success of our students, because it is. That our collaborative process has allowed our St. Lucie family to weather some very difficult times. Through collaboration, we have been able to reach some creative and effective solutions that would have been impossible to achieve via a more traditional adversarial relationship. A key part of any good collaborative environment are the relationships we forge. And I will Contacting each of you over the next few weeks to meet and to begin building new relationships or expanding existing relationships. What I'm trying to say that is while some things are going to undoubtedly be different, it is my intention that the core beliefs that have guided the relationship between the district and the union over the years will continue to guide us as we tackle the challenges that lie ahead. Finally, I have a very short but very important piece of business to address. Last July when we signed our contract for the 2017-28 school year, Part of the agreement was that we would meet and discuss additional compensation this spring. The district also agreed to make additional compensation a priority. So far we have met and discussed and agreed to additional compensation for our teachers. However, although we have met, we have not yet reached an agreement over the additional compensation for our support staff and non-instructional employees. As a priority, this compensation should be discussed before any additional new district expenditures. Our discussion has been about reaching overall equity between our units. We would like to begin discussing the 2018-2019 year in the hopes of continuing to reach an agreement prior to the start of school as we have over the past two years, but we cannot begin that discussion until we conclude negotiations for this year. Thank you, and I look forward to working with the district and this board on behalf of our members as President of St. Lucie CTA CU. Thank you, Mr. David Freeman, for your um, report. We now have the CWA report, if there's one this evening. And seeing that there are none, we will go right into our, um, we have an unscheduled speaker, Sheriff Ken Mascara, if you would come up at this time, he's gonna come forward to address uh, the consent item 12.2, school resource program agreement for 2018-19 school year prior to the vote. Welcome, Sheriff Mascara. Madam Chair, school board members, Mr. Gent, thank you for this opportunity. You know, it seems like this isn't high enough. Hang on a minute. <laughs> 
There you go. Seems like just yesterday we had the meeting where we discussed this, and uh, your comments were uh, very appreciative, but uh, I don't want to reiterate all the comments from two weeks ago, but I would like to revisit some of the highlights of those comments. As you know, the school resource deputy uh, started in 1983 as a result of a grand jury uh, recommendation. Then Sheriff Bobby Knowles uh, instituted the school resource deputy program in 1986, and he was quoted as saying, as sheriff, that will be the most important thing he accomplishes in, in his tenure as sheriff. Then Superintendent George Hill, uh, when it was brought before the school board, thought it was so important, he recommended that the school board pick up 50% of the cost of the school resource deputy program at that time. And anybody want to guess what the cost was in 1986? $250,000. So we've come a long way. Since that time, this partnership over the past 32 years has been one of great results. Uh, we've had at a high 46 deputies throughout St. Lucie County Public Schools. Uh, that height was reached in 2009. And at that time, the school board bore the 50% uh, of the cost of the program and the sheriff's office bore the other 50% of the cost. In 2010, with the downturn of the economy, uh, we reduced our school resource deputies to 23, mm -hmm. and uh, the school board uh, ceased paying any contribution to the program. However, the St. Lucie County Board of County Commissioners upped the ante, and they went ahead and continued to fund uh, the full program uh, up until a couple of years ago, in which the school board again uh, assumed $400,000 of the cost of the program. So this has been a program that uh, has been beneficial to both of us. The Board of County Commissioners have committed uh, over the past 10 years close to $17.5 million to keep the program going. And as we look forward to the future, we feel that, uh, and you do, that uh, one uh, entity dealing with and contracting with would be of uh, benefit to both of us as we continue into the next school year with the new mandates uh, proposed by the legislation. So I'm here to answer any uh, specific questions uh, or concerns in regard to the MOU that we're looking at. Uh, but uh, it truly has been a pleasure uh, to work with all of you in keeping our children safe in St. Lucie County Public Schools. Thank you, uh, Sheriff Mascara. Board, do you have any questions, any comments, any concerns that you'd like to address at this time? Well, seeing there's none. We thank you very much for your you're, service you're to this uh, St. Lucie County schools and to our entire, we, we thank all of our law enforcement, mm -hmm. um, every department for joining together and making sure that our children are safe. Thank Great. you, Sheriff. Thank Sarah. you. Sheriff, Good I evening. Do have a, Sheriff, I do have a question. <laughs> okay, we have a question yeah. from uh, just Mr. Ingersoll. Just, just for our, our, our viewing mm -hmm. audience. How many uh, deputies do you think will be in the schools, roughly? Well, uh, after now. after the tragedy of Parkland, uh, we upped it to 36 deputies currently. We foresee uh, 56 to 60 starting next school year. Thank you, sir. You're welcome you very your much. Service. Thank you for your service. Okay, we're going to go into our uh, adoption of the consent agenda. I'd like to call for a motion and a second to adopt the consent agenda this evening. So moved, so moved by Ms. Was that Ms. Hinsley? Ms. Hinsley. Mm -hmm. Second. Second by Ms. Harley. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Superintendent, may we have your recommendation this evening? I recommend approval of the consent agenda as submitted. All right. Uh, I call for a motion to th for the approval. So second. moved by Ms. Hensley and second by Mr. Ingersoll. Uh, any board member have a comment on the consent agenda? Everybody's clear with that, okay. Is there any uh, board member that would like to pull any of the items off of the consent agenda? Okay, I call for a vote, seeing that there is none to pull off. Uh, may I have a motion, please? I mean the vote, I'm sorry, come on. You want to? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, Any, none opposed. Motion carries 5-0. Uh, for informational report, uh, there is 
no board action there. Uh, Superintendent, may we have your report? Thank you. We have uh, a couple of uh, personnel moves uh, tonight, and I'm um, going to ask them to come up to the front and then uh, give some uh, brief comments uh, to the board and to the public. Uh, first, I'd like to bring up uh, be our new Chief Operations Officer, Mr. Terrence O'Leary. Terrence purposely sat in the back so he could have a little extra time to, uh, for us to see him. We're very excited about this move. As everybody's aware, Terrence is a superstar um, and uh, serves on many different um, on boards uh, across the country and uh, brings a, a unique skill set. He started out here, I believe, as a third grade teacher in our school district and uh, has worked his way through the system. So, Mr. O'Leary. Great. Good evening, board chair, board members, Mr. Gent, distinguished guests, and colleagues. I'm extremely honored and humbled and excited by this opportunity to continue to serve our students, teachers, administrators, parents, and community in this new role as CEO for the St. Lucie Public Schools. I have the privilege to serve St. Lucie Public Schools in many roles for 26 years, all which fulfill my why and purpose, which is supporting a first-class education for our students here in St. Lucie County. I would like to, if you would indulge me, for taking a quick minute to thank a few people who have been instrumental in my growth. My parents, while they're not here today, their legacy have instilled in me and my seven siblings are priceless. My dad, who passed away a year ago this past month, instilled in all of us the value of hard work. My dad was the epitome of an active listener. Often the lesson he relayed to me and my siblings was quoted best by Frank Ocean. Work hard in silence and let your results be your success. My mom, known as Sweet Sweets by all who know her, taught us the building of relationships. Being from a large family, my mom made sure she took time to build each individual relationship with each one of us. I use both of these skills in my daily work and will continue to use them in my new role. Last, my siblings. Because being part of a large family, you learn a tremendous amount of leadership skills, especially when five boys share one room and the girls share the other room and there's only one bathroom. Those skills of negotiation, influence, and collaboration were used daily, especially around dinner time, chores, but if you just wanted to use the bathroom, that's when you use them the most. <laughs> Lastly, Sweet Sweets said to me the other night during our Sunday conversation, I'm Sunday, that's Florida calls on Sunday, that I would be nowhere without the support of my wife for the last 26 years. And listen, you don't argue with Sweet Sweets, but seriously, that's completely true. Tonight, my wife Janine is here, and I thank her for the countless hours of support to me and my family. Julia, Justin, Jarrett, and Janine, you are the reason who, when I walk out the door every day, I want to make most proud of. I thank each of you. Once again, I'm thankful to the board, Mr. Gent, and all my colleagues for this brilliant opportunity. And with that said, now it's time to go to work. And to that I say, all right, all right, all right. It's time to go to work. Thank you. All right. That's good. Thank you, Terrence. Thanks, Terrence. Terrence, can we have your wife stand, please, in the back? Mrs. O'Leary. There you go. Thanks for being here. I believe she's taking you out to dinner. You're, it's her treat, so pick a good place. Okay, I'd like to bring up at this time um, Mr. John Gillette, who will be our Director of Maintenance, Building, and Service Projects. Mr. Gillette. I think I'm vertically challenged. I may need to lower this a little bit. Thank you. Board members, Madam Chairman, Mr. Dent. 
About 140 years ago, my family immigrated from Scotland to Fort Pierce and opened a store on the Indian River that still stands there today. They sold it to their employer, his name was P.P. P. Cobb. And over those 140 years, my grand, great grandparents, my grandparents, my mother, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, my wife and I, my son, my daughter, and now my two grandchildren, one goes to this school and one at Fort Pierce Central, have gone through the St. Lucie County school system. I watched my mother go to work at Fairlawn when we lived across the street every day as a teacher's aide, my sister father. My wife Donna worked there for a short period of time. I've been around education pretty much all my life, but the last 30 years, I've had the opportunity to work for education. And um, I didn't really know how much my heart was into it until just recently when my wife was, and I had been discussing retirement and I didn't, wasn't ready to go yet. I'm still ready to give everything that I have still for this district. And this vote of confidence that I got from y'all by offering this to me um, was very humbling but it also is kind of scary because I watched some really good people go before me. And you know that 30 years ago we had half as many students, half as much square foot. So I have 6 million square foot, 5,000 roughly employees, 40,000 students that I'll be responsible for. And it seemed like a, a hard challenge for me until I started thinking about the people that have been placed around me to assist me, to help me, my staff, uh, Carolyn Rarick, um, all the people, when I look at their faces and see the quality of staff and the people that support me, including you and the uh, executive council and everyone else, I've been set up for, for success. I really feel like that, and I thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm going to make it personal. I'm going to do my best to... Uh, leave some kind of gift for those that left gifts for us as we came up through the school system. We never, we never talked about the custodial staffs or the construction companies or anything growing up because they were just seamless. They just kept things going for us. And that's what we want to do is to be supportive of all the staff, teachers, and students and make it something that they'll just remember their education. Maybe not remember us, but they're going to remember that the school system was the best one they had the opportunity to be at. And I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gillette. Through the, uh, this year's state legislation, uh, we were, um, the school district said to come up with a director of safety and security, so that was an easy move for us. Uh, Mr. Ruther, come on up. Brian was the chief of uh, safety and security, so we're going to put the title on there as director of uh, safety and security, so we meet the uh, state statute, and uh, he insisted on having a couple of uh, seconds to come on up here. and. Uh, and say something. Welcome, Brian. Good evening. I'm not sure how you topped the last two presenters. So I'm going to say in the interest of time, I was going to forego my 45 minutes of prepared remarks and my 74 slide PowerPoint. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, Madam Chair, Board, Mr. Gent, Dr. Prince, staff, I want to thank you for your confidence in me. I want to thank you for your confidence in the safety and security department. I know that the safety and security of our students are paramount. Uh, we will do everything within our power to enhance the safety and security of our schools and our campuses. As you know, we have accomplished a lot in the last several years, and I thank you for your support because that has enabled us to do the things we need to do to help secure our schools. I'm very honored uh, by receiving this position. I will do everything in my power to make sure we have safe schools for, for our students, staff, and our visitors. I would also like to thank my family, my wife Ruth Ann, as you know, as a teacher retired over 30 years of service to the school district. My son and daughter are both graduates of the St. Lucie Public Schools. My son has his doctorate in psychology, and my daughter is the director of global talent for Seminole Tribe, uh, Seminole Hard Rock. So uh, obviously they've done well in their careers and they're off the payroll which is great too. So I want to thank you again for your confidence. I want to thank you for your confidence in the safety security department. Our men and women work hard every, each and every day to support our principals, to support our staff at the schools, uh, to make sure that we have an excellent department 
and we are caring for and we're attending to the needs of people in our district. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. And uh, finally, as far as recognition goes tonight, uh, we're going to be losing Mr. Carvini. Michael is uh, going to accept another position, and I just want to, and tomorrow's his last day, and I just want to say publicly that uh, he has come in in the two years he's been here, he's turned our, the department upside down in a very, very positive way, and it's just done a, uh, has raised the bar uh, very, very high. And uh, now the person that's going to uh, maintain that bar and raise it any higher, I'm proud to present, is Ms. Alicia Seitz. And uh, she is going to come up front, and she uh, will tell you a little bit about her story. But uh, she works in the CT department, and uh, so we stay right here uh, in-house as we have with all these moves for, for these uh, uh, positions. The floor is yours. Good evening. First, I would like to thank Chairwoman Dr. Donna Mills, our esteemed board members, and our superintendent, Mr. E. Wei Jen, for this incredible opportunity. I would like to thank my husband, Travis, and my daughters, Kylie and Nadia, which are here, and my enormous family for their continued support. To Dr. Helen Weil, Denise Rodriguez, Henry Santabria, Christy Parker, Bob Kramner, and of course, Mr. Michael Carbini, thanks for showing me what a quality leader is and should be. Thanks to our team members, Karen Lucas Brown, and Dana Caputo for your continuous support and hard work. Thanks to Pete Tash and our EDC members, I look forward to continuing the growth of our pathways for our student success within the community. Lastly, I stand before you and I declare my pride because I am a product of St. Lucie Public Schools. I went to White City Elementary, Northport Middle School, Fort Pierce Central, and I was part of the first graduating class at St. Lucie West Centennial High School. I then continued my post-secondary education at Indian River State College, where one of my degrees there was a Associates of Science degree as a res in respiratory therapy. I worked at St. Lucie Medical Center for many years, and I returned to St. Lucie Public Schools because of my passion to influence and mold our youth. We have a great school system, and I am proud of the opportunities my kids and every child here in St. Lucie County is provided with on a daily basis. So I thank you. Thank you very much. Can we have your family stand? I saw the girls and the husband. You want to have them stand? There we go. I'm sure there'll be a nice dinner tonight with everybody as well. And uh, just a couple other comments. I do have uh, my comments in print because I knew this was maybe a longer meeting, so I'll pass that out, but I'll just be very, very brief. I have a T-shirt in front of me. This is Autism with Blue, and this is Autism uh, Awareness Month. And uh, so uh, we want to recognize, and Bill and his team had already been up here uh, for the fantastic job. There was a, uh, a uh, little um, party and a, and a, and a, a ceremony uh, this past uh, Sunday um, that many of us were unable to attend due to other conf uh, not conflicts, but uh, com uh, other duties, uh, meetings, but um, appreciate what they do and appreciate particularly the instructors uh, and the aides that work with, the, with our students, our most uh, very special uh, need students, and uh, it's very, very tough work as, uh, as it is with all of our ESC students, and uh, just appreciate the great work that they do. So I wanted to recognize them and got a nice t-shirt out of the deal. And uh, this Thursday night will be music in our schools at 7 o'clock at Fenn Center. It's free to everyone. Uh, tomorrow there's a breakfast at, uh, sponsored by the Chamber. It's going to be at Port St. Lucie High School. I saw Mr. Ocampo here earlier, and the board members were invited to that. Um, we've got uh, the uh, Garber, Garber um, uh, Buick GMC was here a little while ago, and we've got on April 21st uh, the test drive that will be going on over at uh, Port St. Lucie High School. And if they reach a certain number of drivers, uh, the school can get up to $10,000. Central has done it already, and I believe Treasure Coast has done it. And uh, now it'll be uh, Port St. Lucie High Schools. And I'm, I may have missed somebody, and if I did, I, I'm sorry. And uh, our graduations, the reason that we're here is to graduate our young men and young women and make them productive citizens and to move them on up to the world of uh, work or college and career, whatever they decide to do. But that's kicking off in, uh, in about uh, a few weeks next month. And so it's important that uh, parents and uh, those seniors are paying close attention to what's going on in school and those ceremonies. And uh, it's always a great time. We'll have three out at the fairgrounds and we'll have three at the Finn Center. And uh, again, uh, also on um, April 28th at Met Stadium will be the Safety Festival and Family Literacy Day. 
and uh, it's always a great event. It's always well attended by the community members as well, and uh, we'll have booths out there. Transportation is there as well, and uh, we'll have different booths and uh, um, marketing and branding of the school district and continue to do that. And then just on a final note, and I don't know if Bill's still here. He is, and I know his team left. Um, it was really a remarkable event for uh, our folks. Um, I reached out to uh, Superintendent Runcy right away after the uh, tragedy. And uh, when I talked to Bill about, do you think we can get some folks there? You know, it, it was less than maybe 30 minutes than when I had sent him a note that he responded back and we're gonna have a, a full group of, uh, of our staff members to go down. And they have some interesting stories to tell um, to be up, up close and personal uh, with the students that were there as well as what they do here. And I just wanna um, thank them. We gave them a little, a little plaque tonight, but uh, you know, words can't go far enough to just to say the debt of gratitude that I have and I know our school board has. Uh, for that, just not only supporting our own students, but supporting all of our children in our country and in our state. So thank you, Bill, and to your team. Thank you. That concludes my remarks. Thank you, Superintendent Gent. Um, I believe you said the, and thank you for this, the form that you passed out. It's very um, informational as to what's coming up. Um, but I believe you said the Chamber Business and Education Breakfast was tomorrow. And it says here it's the 18th, April the 18th. Okay, so that's it. Is the 18th? Yeah. I stand corrected. All righty then. I'm sure Mr. Ocampo will still have breakfast for you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to show up there. Okay, we're going to ask the uh, attorney Harold. Do you have any comments? Okay, we're going to go start straight from attorney Harold to Miss uh, Hensley, please. We have passed this evening the first vote and the League of Women Voters in St. Lucie County, uh, some of the members, I think there were a dozen of them, that went through the state training and then they went through hours of training in Ms. Walker's office to be able to help facilitate. And uh, that's a wonderful thing that they are very excited about. Also, as you know, we're following in the uh, CRC to see exactly what the Constitution Revision Commission is going to do. There are still several things on there that we are unhappy with. And there uh, is a movement by several state organizations to actually uh, continue to write letters and emails to see if they can uh, get them to uh, look at things slightly differently. Uh, also, one of the good things about being uh, involved with some statewide organizations is that they refer to you or they call and ask information from other school districts. Uh, we have, as you probably know, a very high uh, reputation in the state for being uh, a professional board. And so they're, they are willing to call board members and ask for advice, ask for uh, where they can find information, and also they actually refer to us when they have an issue of concern. And instead of calling the press or whatever that, they will call one of us and give us some information. So I think that's a really great thing, building those relationships. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hensley. Uh, Ms. Hilson, please. Ms. Hawley? Mr. Ingersoll? No report. Okay, uh, as we know that this, uh, this month, April, is district testing, and also, uh, you know, for our kids and state testing, and so those of you who know to pray, pray for our children, because they are now got the little butterflies and our teachers and educators, and we, but we've been preparing them for this. You have been preparing them all year long and we know they'll do just fine, but we do know that we wanna be sensitive within the district um, in regards to uh, the testing that will be going on, and we wish you all the best. Uh, we are a B district currently, and we're very proud of that and excited about that, um, as well as our graduation rate of being in the 90 percentile. So we'll continue the work, and we thank you so much for all of your hard efforts. Um, our administrators, thank you for everybody working together, being on one accord to ensure the success of each and every one of our students. Also want to congratulate John and, and Terrence and Brian and uh, Alicia for your promotions this evening. Each of you are wonderful people. I've gotten to know you personally for the past eight years, and so uh, we feel very confident uh, that you will do the job that is necessary. Well, we're getting ready to go into adjournment at this time. I believe everybody's clear. We are adjourned. <laughs>